Hello, welcome to the onboarding meeting, to the most secret, and important project, that we have here at this company. In order to be here, you have to have proven yourself. To be a leader in your field, and second to none in terms of loyalty and dedication. Almost all of you have been promoted from within the company, through hard work and dedication. I would also like to give a warm welcome to our newest member of the team, and our company, Dr. Abscondum, the physicist I have been telling you about. We do not have these meetings. All that often, so some of you have been on the project for a little while now. This can be all of our chance, to get a refresher on what the other teams are working on, and give us all a better idea, of the common goals and direction we are all working on. This is the last project you will be on in this company. The stakes are literally life or death here. In this project, we are all the best, and most experienced minds in our fields. We gather here to do what none before us, have ever dared to try. Break death's hold. Over our lives, and over the future of humanity. We also dare to forever break, the endless cycle of violence and greed, that enslaves us all. We seek peace, freedom, and eventually the power to be the strong force for good that our universe so desperately needs. We plan the impossible and have only a fool's hope of pulling it off. But I stand here confident in our dream and confident that we here in this room are just the right people who can pull this off. We have the experience, the talent, the resources, and the drive to do the impossible. And we will never stop until this is done. Now I would like to welcome Dr. Alina Navavita, our former project coordinator for the Digital Life Program and who is currently on the leadership team for this project. As you all know very well, our company was founded with the purpose of extending life as much as is possible. The Digital Life program was started because no matter how good our efforts, eventually we fail. Medicine has come a very long way from the ancient days of bloodletting and leeches. We can now grow almost any body part needed. Custom grown hearts, lungs, or even arms or legs were all very difficult problems that have been solved now. And what few things cannot be replaced, Medicine has found ways of giving many more years of life too. Our telomere enhancing drugs are just one such breakthrough. That we now make good money from as a company. But in the end, the need to replace the one most important part of the body, the brain, has led to the digital life program. Neural connections to the brain have become better over this last century, and we now have the ability to offload memories to computer so that digital assisted memory can ensure that recalling details and events in perfect detail even many years later is no longer fiction but a new reality due to the encoding storage and retrieval processes the mind has this process is still not 100 percent perfect yet but it does greatly help with complex tasks such as the one we have of trying to create new scientific breakthroughs such as the world has never seen yet. But the mind is not just a storage and retrieval device. The way in which we process information is very important. It is known very well now, the roles that the many parts of the mind play in our lives. They evolved over millions of years, and help with not just processing the data that the senses provide, but also the interpretation. When the eyes collect information, it is the brain that actually sees the world. And the rich color it has. The same brain then near instantly gives meaning, associates things and events with memories and preconceived ideas we have, and helps us make sense of the world around us. Our brain gives us personality, emotion, sensuality, and the deep relationships we build with those we love so dearly. And every person's brain is wired differently. Starting at birth, the experiences and memories we have, along with the decisions we choose to make, helps change how our brains are physically wired. The structure of the brain itself, 
changes over time, with decisions we make, and experiences we have. And this all has to be taken into account, when digitizing the brain. The workaround we used, was to simulate many of these processes, and use approximations and estimates whenever needed. The life as it is transferred is much more of an estimation. And approximation, than we ever will admit to the public that pays so much for it. There are certainly improvements that will be made over the years, but this is absolutely not the ideal, if we were capable of doing anything. The idea of transferring the biological, to the digital mechanical, is always going to have problems caused by translation. Between two mediums, even once we perfect it further. Moving from one computer to another, might be fine for robots and the digital world, but it is not fine for biology. The holy grail, or the ultimate end of this new project we have, would be to transfer the biological to the biological. We have been unsuccessful in ending death of one organism. No matter how many tricks, and how much money we throw at the problem, but transferring consciousness from body to body, would be something far better than transferring to a digital brain. The first reflex to many is one of horror and disgust, with being faced with the idea of parting ways with their old brain. The sense of self is very strong. And the desire to continue to live, does not seem to extend to any similar being that is not you. Looking more at the details of how consciousness is formed, and what gives us our sense of self, has given us keys that we believe can unlock the self, and allow us to actually move the soul, or essence of who we are. We feel after looking at the data, that we have a very good grasp, at what makes us feel conscious, and how to be able to seamlessly move, without destroying the soul of who we are. This is our best chance at life, and of solving the problem of death, that we all must face, if this project were to fail. With more details about the process of transferring consciousnesses. My colleague, Dr. Sparrow. Hello, when talking about transferring consciousness from one body to another, we must first look at many details. Looking at the ultimate goal, but without the details, is very scary, because we cannot see how this could be possible. We have assumptions and concepts, that come from feelings or traditions, rather than facts. When our knowledge, perception, and even our deepest fears, are based on instinct, rather than facts, then it is instinct and emotion that really leads us, not logic and objectivity. In order to understand if moving consciousness, and the essence of who we are, to another body, we need to thoroughly understand what internal processes create this, in the first place. We all know here, that the many parts of the brain, from one person to another, are very similar, and have evolved over many millions of years. The areas of the brain evolved first in ancestor species, some parts of our brain earlier than others. But the way in which neurons are connected together to form memories, and to form personality and process the incoming information from our world. The way in which these neurons are connected is very important. The actual material itself in the body does not seem to be as important as many might think. We have known for a long time, that cells get replaced throughout most of the body, every few years. Scars remain, and the body itself, in all practical purposes, does remain unchanged in every practical way, other than that it gets older. In a thought experiment, we simply replace cells of the brain one by one with newer cells, but without changing the structure of the brain, or how the individual neurons are functioning. Since this process already happens, throughout the body, with no question of the arm or leg, for example, being different before or after cells are replaced, then the brain therefore, would not be any different. This example can hopefully then help explain, how our two potential methods could work, to actually keep everything that makes you intact, while moving from a dying body, to a youthful one. In one method, we trigger cell replacement in the brain. Much like how some fossilization works to replace cells, at time even as small as at a microscopic level, we trigger cell replacement, to keep the existing structure down to the smallest level, 
but infuse new material to replace the old aging cells. In the other method, we use a radically different technique, where we use a type of electrical stimulation with new growth mediums, to generate cell growth along, very specific pathways we choose. In this method, we have an extremely detailed digital map of the brain, and are getting very good preliminary results in getting a very accurate match built down to microscopic details. In this method, we do have to worry about how to move consciousness, from the old brain to the new one, in order to avoid the possibility that the new brain, would just seem to be only a copy of the old brain, with the memories of the old uploaded, we can actually help the consciousness move. Now even if we did not, if we got the copyright, being indistinguishable in theory between the new and the old, other than the fact that the new brain is more youthful, it still arguably would be you in a sense, not feeling a transition of consciousness moving to a new body, and thinking that there was just a copy moving on to the future, would be a deal breaker for many. To move consciousness, we have developed a technique to transfer the active working thoughts, to the new mind. In a very small summary of a very large complex process, we use a method where, after the new mind is created, we use an electronic bridge, to connect the old and new brains. With the electronics, we have a method to encourage the old mind, to take control of the new one, and start bringing it to life. With even the most accurate methods to grow the new mind, to precisely mirror the old, minus age damage, there are still imperfections. As the old mind connects with the new, the new mind becomes active, and self-corrects the actual structure of the brain, both through natural processes, and with some assistance from the neural bridge. We then, with the help of the neural bridge, encourage the active processes within the old mind to take over the new mind. We then start shutting down the old, and use the bridge to encourage the thought processing in the old mind, to start to completely take hold of the newer stronger mind and move away from the old. The old mind gets shut down for the last time, as this transition completes. While shutting down a mind is very scary, remember we do not have a choice in the long run. Without moving to the new mind, the older dying mind, will eventually stop forever. In preliminary tests, brains have functioned far more like biological computers, than we ever could have imagined before. They seem to work far better, with other biological based computers. Than digital ones. Having an old working brain take control of a new dormant brain, is something not just realistic, but in practice, more elegant than biological to digital ever promises to be. Moving the soul of who we are, is a very realistic goal from what we have learned thus far. At this point, it looks like moving to the new mind is the only realistic option that we will be able to get to work. The problem with trying to get new cells to replace old cells, and fix the brain that is dying, is the same reason scar tissue can stay in place long after the original injury happened. As new cells replace old, the damage stays, because the damaged areas are also made up of cells, that get replaced as well. Building new is more efficient at this point, to fix the brain, after it gets to a certain age. Once the soul is in the new body, treatment to continually renew the cells in the brain, can extend the life of the new healthier brain. Since we are interested living forever, Increasing the life of the new body, is very important. The brain is not the only area that needs attention. The genetics of cloning and manipulating genes, also has a lot to do with the longevity problem, we have to solve. DNA drift over time, as well as the DNA aging process itself, must also be solved, in order to avoid inevitable errors through copying and aging of DNA, that could also kill us. To cover the topic, here is my colleague. Dr. Strano Amore. To be continued.